by Mr. Gibson. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Flanagan. Any discussion? All those in favor of uh, the motion to approve the minutes, please uh, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion is uh, approved. Next, we'll call, call on our treasurer, Ms. Linda Ice, for a uh, treasurer's report. Thank you and good morning. And we are looking at, since this is a combined May-June meeting, we are looking at the statements as of April 30th of 2016. We always start with the cash graph and that is reflecting cash of $11.8 million. And this is a decrease over the prior year of about $2 million. And I always check our cash balances right before I always come to the meeting. And so today we have about $12.7 million in the bank. When we look at the statement of net positions, our net position for the end of April is at $66 million. And really the only other item that I have is a quick reminder that uh, the audit is coming soon. The auditors will be here in two weeks uh, for the first round of field work and they'll be back again in August. And so this is my pitch to please have all year-end items in by July 7th, which is a couple of days after our 4th of July break. I'll entertain any questions or if, you, if there's anything you'd like to discuss in the statements. Do we have a new partner in charge on that audit this year? We certainly do. Rachel Wiggins was moved to the Kansas City office and so Kim Cam will be our new representative, new partner representative. Brian Civil will also still be on board as well as Powell Miller. Great. Still from BKD. Yes, sir. Yeah. If there's no que further questions of Ms. Ice, the chair would entertain a motion to re approve her report. Um, motion by Mr. McCumber. Do I hear a second? Second. I think that was Mr. Franks. Mr. Heidel. Hankins. Oh, okay, I didn't catch that. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion to approve the treasurer's report signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay? The report is approved. Uh, we'll call on Mr. Rob Eust, uh, Vice President for Business Affairs. Thank you. We'll briefly go through the construction report. Reynolds Hall remodeling, the demo of the third floor is complete, and they began laying out the new walls for the third floor. We're still on track to complete that by December. Then we will move the occupants from the first floor and some occupants from the annex up to the third floor. We'll be emptying out the first floor. Some of those occupants go to the annex, and we'll work on the renovation of the first floor. Hopefully, everybody will be I'm not going to let everybody be back in their uh, positions by this time next year. As far as the Joplin Regional Center, we're working on renovating a portion of that. We're designing that to house our Child Development Center. This is coupled with the additional appropriations that we received to uh, house UMKC Dental on our campus. So we will be working with our architects to design that, move CDC over there, and then it have an addition to and a renovation of Taylor Hall to House Psychology, which is where UMKC will be going into. And finally, we are working with uh, Empire District to install a electric vehicle charging station on our campus. This will be housed over at the uh, stadium parking lot, and they'll be installing that in the next couple of weeks on their dime. That's all I have, unless anybody has any questions. Until some laws pass where we can meet her at the cell. Okay. <laughs> okay, if there's no questions, we thank Mr. Eust and we will call on Mr. Jared Krugerman, athletic director. Thank you. You have the complete report in front of you. I'm just going to hit uh, a couple of highlights. First off, last week at the MIAA meetings, we had the um, MIAA Hall of Fame. We had two inductees out of, the, I think there was eight inductees um, out of the two of those. One was Jim Frazier, previous athletic director, head football coach. Uh, here. Um, so 
It was a great moment for, for him to be inducted into the MIAA Hall of Fame, as well as Eden uh, Santiago, who played basketball here, uh, 99, 2000, 2001. And uh, so they were both inducted. It was, it was really nice to see that. There was only three schools that actually had anybody inducted. Missouri Southern had two of those uh, out of the three schools. So, um, Secondly, I just wanted to wrap up this, the end of the academic year as far as for the athletics department. We had 137 student athletes that had above a 3.0 GPA. We had 11 all academic MIAA honorees. We had nine with a 4.0. So they were called the uh, MIAA Academic Excellence Award winners. So we had nine student athletes with a 4.0. Uh, we had 67 all MIAA student athletes, 21 all region athletes, 21 all Americans, six academic all Americans, and then two national champions uh, two weeks ago when we were at the national championships down in Florida for, for track and field. So, in addition to that, Vincent Kiprup was the cross country and outdoor track regional athlete of the year. Um, he was also the cross country academic all American. He's a freshman. And um, as well as that, Brian Shining, our, our track and field coach on the men's side and now uh, director of track and field for both men and women, uh, was the outdoor uh, men's regional coach of the year as well as the MIAA coach of the year. So very successful year academically and, and on the field, which is what we're looking for. So Vincent Kipper is the second nationally cross country and won the 10,000? Won the 10K. Yeah, he smoked them actually. It was pretty amazing. And he's a freshman. He's a freshman. Okay. Those and three, three, and it's three, three, three point eight GPA in biology. So four good things. There we go. We're doing well. Any uh, questions of Mr. Brueggemann? If not, we thank you for a very good report, and we will call on Dr. Brad Hodson, Executive Vice President. Good morning. You have a written report uh, in front of you, but I will just hit on a couple of quick things. One, you have some admissions updates. These are year-to-year -year comparisons uh, from this date today to the same date in 2015. Uh, the third bullet in particular will help you uh, follow up on the conversation we had in budget and audit regarding the 1.5% uh, growth factor that was included in the budget. You can see that we are uh, well ahead of, the, ahead of that year to year, and so that's um, something we're very pleased about. Also today on campus, there are 110 members of the advancement profession, which is fundraising, alumni relations, and public relations and marketing from our peer institutions, the MIAA schools. On campus, the uh, annual advancement, uh, MIAA advancement conference is being held here this year, and we're honored to host those folks. And, and so, if you see them around campus, there are colleagues from around the MIAA. And the last thing I'll bring your attention to at your place setting, you have a copy of the magazine, which should be hitting mailboxes today and tomorrow. Uh, my congratulations to the staff in University Relations, which performs yeoman work to get this out twice a year and do such a high quality job. I will draw your attention to page nine where we announced the arrival of our latest member of the Board of Governors. And you can read about Anita Aplotnik on page nine. But uh, we are very proud of our magazine, and we know it does help us connect and engage with alumni uh, when it comes out each time, twice a year. Are there any questions of uh, Dr. Rods? If not, we thank you for your, your report, and we will now call on Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Paula Carson. I have to talk really fast and really short today. It's been a, a mandate, um, and so I, I, <laughs> I do have uh, my report here, but the, the most important thing that I want to do is introduce someone that you all have um, probably need no introduction to, and that is Dr. <coughs> and he is in the back, joined us here today. He has joined us as incoming dean of the School of Health Sciences and will assume that position permanently at the end of the month. Um, he is coming in during this time really just to um, meet the teams, have some time to become familiar. But it's, um, for me, it's already been a, a pleasure and a privilege and insightful um, to me to work with Rick. So. Um, we're delighted and humbled that you joined our team. So again, I know many, many of you already know him, but um, uh, this afternoon I'll, I'll be working in, he will be very important in coming up with our recommendations about our future program growth. And, and we are just abs absolutely thrilled um, that he sees working <coughs> with us as, as part of his legacy. So thank you for coming. I, I know he needs no further introduction. I'm still kind of amazed that he birthed four, 5,000 babies, 4,000. So, <laughs> um, 
so that's completely amazing. But I also want to probably have the students on campus. <laughs> yeah, that way. <laughs> I wanted to say very, very quickly that um, we have had just a, an amazing hiring year. I, I think prior to my arrival at the um, beginning of this year, we had a very good team of incoming faculty to strengthen our academic core. This year has also been amazing. The majority of our searches have been successful in cases, the small number of cases where they haven't been successful, it has really just simply been because um, there were issues beyond our control, um, spousal relocation issues, things like that. We just didn't have a position. So um, I am I am really delighted. We do have just a normal amount of change in leadership positions. So what I've included, just for your reference, because it, I thought this might, might be helpful, the second page of my report is a list of our existing and incoming department chairs with the new ones italicized. And also the faculty that are um, associated with each of those departments, our full-time faculty, are continuing adjuncts as well as our dual credit. And then on the next page of the report are the new hires that we have with regard to faculty so far. We had a, another acceptance in the School of Nursing um, this week and we're doing background check on that particular position. We have probably two other offers that are outstanding right now, and um, we're continuing ongoing search for the <coughs> library director. Uh, but I, I just thought it might be nice for you guys to, uh, to have that information and to see. We'll get you more in the fall on the specific backgrounds and um, intellectual accomplishments of those individuals. Um, the uh, my my focus in this month is on our interactions with. K-12, which is sort of rational and logical during the summer. A lot of this has already been covered. The academic signing had very, very good press, and it was an amazing event. And immediately after, schools have already reached out. Other high schools, which was our hope and intent, to come have the academic signing, very much like an athletic signing. And um, many, many students have expressed at Joplin High um, that they are excited to do it. You have, um, the governors have before your place, the challenge coin that we gave in the entire ceremony was around the presentation of the challenge coin. Um, what it means, the symbolic representation and that this is a manifestation of our faith and their ability to academically succeed. So um, we wanted you guys to have them. The, the only other ones we've ever given away or to the, the 30 students, drop on high students picture here but we're gonna do more of those. It was just a, a very wonderful experience for the family, for the parents. We're continuing to expand our dual credit. We're looking at beyond just the basic types of high school programs um, to work on dual credit initiatives in the areas of high school research, particularly around our History <coughs> Day Fair, History Day um, Research Initiative, as well as our um, Science Day. So. We have met with um, leaders, department heads at Joplin High School to begin to do this. Super exciting to us because this will be an opportunity for us to offer dual credit at the 200 level. Lifetime Sports Academy has had good coverage. It concludes this week and then this evening is Golden Lions. The of note is that I wanted to make sure if you guys didn't, that you knew our theme semester commencing in the fall was um, around Great Britain. And there will be a host of activities, which is normally the case here. And I will get you the schedule of those. And then finally, last time we were here, I had in my report that it's Friday that was coming up, Dr. Conrad Bubera, who many of you know did the presentation. But it was also a very special occasion because we were able to give um, special new medallions to emeritus faculty and we had several come and participate. So um, for, we have a, about 26 over the lifetime of the institution emeritus faculty and we wanted again a symbolic manifestation when they attended graduation and other events that um, represented our respect and gratitude to them. So we, we have one of these, I'll pass it around if you guys want to see it, but from now on when you all approve a new emeritus faculty. We will present these medallions up there. That was quick, huh? Very good. Okay. Not bad. Thank you. <coughs> Not good. Not bad. Any any questions of Dr. Carson? If not, we thank you for your report, and we will now call on Mr. Darren Fullerton, Vice President for Student Affairs and Enrollment Management. Thanks again, Mr. Flashaker. Again, you have the report in front of you, and I know we're trying to be brief today to get to several other meetings. Uh, the Spencer Bartlett Awards, I just wanted to highlight uh, uh, that information and uh, we, that was in Accents, was on the email. If you look at that, 
we were able to award over $6,800 in cash to four of our graduating seniors for outstanding service commitment and, and their background. Uh, wanted to also make you aware, we talked last month about the change or that we had an RFP out for food service. So the dining services contract for the university was awarded to Fresh Ideas, a company out of Columbia, Missouri, and uh, they'll be making uh, a wide variety of, of enhancements and improvements. They take over as of July 1st, uh, so a couple weeks from now. Uh, the Southern Welcomes and, and Enrollment Air Freshers are being done by uh, Dr. Hodson. The Joplin Disaster Recovery Summit we talked a little bit about, and you have another booklet in your stack of, of materials that uh, I thought it was just important that you be able to see. We were able to host this workshop, and many of the Missouri Southern uh, faculty and staff volunteered their time. We had people from New York to LA that participated in this, over 360 individuals from across the country that came to hear about the disaster response and recovery in, in Joplin as well as about five different other disaster sites in the Midwest. A um, couple things to brag on with the Student Success Center. Uh, Dr. Plachewski and Dr. Johnson with the biology uh, department actually presented in May a poster presentation at the Human Anatomy and Physiology a society conference and it was called SI which is supplemental instruction enhanced tutoring on a shoestring and it talks about the collaborative effort between the kinesiology department reallocating internal funds for student health to pay for enhanced tutoring and supplemental instruction and then the biology faculty's uh, efforts and working with them to enhance that supplemental instruction so again it's a great example of collaborative efforts across campus between faculty staff and students that, that turned out very successful uh, below that, I also want to mention Ben Starkey. Ben was one of our uh, graduates here in May, but was also featured in the National College uh, Learning Centers Association newsletter for May. Um, and Ben, uh, after graduation, left us. He joined the Navy, and he will actually be uh, working as a nuclear reactor engineer, uh, already has his assignment with the Navy. And so, outstanding example of, of our successful graduates. A lot of other information and, and the residence life information is at the bottom of the page there and we've already talked about that in the budget audit meeting. Um, so I would uh, end there. The only other thing, I had, uh, the bursar would, would not be happy with me if I didn't say, or Linda wouldn't, uh, bills are due today for students. So if any uh, board members or uh, president's cabinet members have students enrolled, uh, make sure they pay their bills by five o'clock today. Uh, hint, hint, uh, if you're there. We're on the My son's on the line. list. <laughs> uh, but then also, uh, I do want to recognize, and I know Kyle will, will uh, talk about this. Today will be Kyle uh, Prysock, our Student Senate President's last meeting. He did graduate, and so the incoming Student Senate President will, will visit with us. And I know Kyle has a few words when this, his turn is up. So with that, that is my report. Any questions of Mr. Fuller? If not, we thank you for your report, and we will now call on our faculty senate president, Dr. Brad Creamer. All right, thank you. Um, I have given you the written report from uh, Dr. Charlo, who is kind of presenting his last one here. Um, <clears throat> real quickly, we uh, have some faculty handbook changes. This is uh, maybe new because we haven't uh, really been updating the faculty handbook quite often. Uh, of course, we did this last year, um, and hopefully updating it every year will make uh, make this more efficient. Um, you'll have those, uh, the, the details of them in your uh, academic affairs uh, files, but uh, we did have some operational procedures and uh, handbook policies that were uh, presented to the Faculty Senate and approved. Uh, unanimously as well, or, uh, by acclamation and then uh, the handbook policies uh, were voted on by the entire faculty through uh, electronic vote and those were all passed as well. Uh, I'll leave the details uh, for, for your uh, perusal. Um, another thing that we did at the end of the year was to um, affirm our uh, position on the conceal and carry uh, legislation that's potentially coming through. Um, we uh, affirmed the resolution from the Missouri Association of Faculty Senates, uh, which basically favors local university control, um, as well as opposing legislation that would override local control. Um, 
Um, we also uh, have been working quite hard with our uh, faculty senate executive <coughs> committee as well as administrators uh, and their um, uh, their uh, secretaries to improve curricular routing documents to make the process a lot easier. And I think that we've improved that uh, quite a bit, uh, which will help us when when it comes time to changing courses or adding or dropping courses. And then finally, uh, Dr. Charlo wanted me to uh, thank everyone for all of, all of uh, your work with them this year. And that's all of my report. Thank you very much. Are there any questions, uh, Dr. Freeman? If not, we thank you for your report. Uh, next on our agenda is a report from Ms. Alyssa Bryant, uh, Staff Center President. Uh, I'm ending my year of today is my last meeting officially with staff senate and chris allen will take over um, he's here in the back of the room um, the last meeting we had was yesterday and um, a neat thing that we are um, staff senate is part of is we are going to be um, hosting staff members for the united way day of service which is june 17th and we currently have over 40 volunteers that are part of staff that are going to be taking part of that um, all over joplin that day and it's actually a Friday that we're off, so it's really neat to see that many people volunteering. Um, Pam Clasp has kind of been the um, person in charge of that. And then um, the next initiative that we'll take into, um, we'll lead into Chris year is staff welfare. We'll um, start looking at the perception of staff senate across the campus and, and trying to get a more um, positive vibe um, with all of staff members. And then um, we're welcoming staff, seven new staff senate centers next year, so it'll be a, a big change. Thank you. Very good. We will miss you. Thank you for your service. And uh, are there any questions? If not, we thank you for your report. Uh, we'll now call on Mr. Prysock. Thank you. I just wanted to come today. Amanda Gardner is the incoming student senate president, and I have every confidence she's going to do a great job. We're leaving her with some tools that weren't there before, and so it should be easier and a little bit faster for them to accomplish some things. But was really proud of what we were able to get accomplished. I didn't know coming into it uh, how slow things can be to do anything, but it's always <coughs> rewarding. And I want to thank you for the opportunity to come and represent to you and to be here with you at this meeting today <coughs> for the opportunities throughout the year. We thank you for your service on the board and uh, wish you great success in your career after Southern. Thank you very much. Are there any questions of uh, Mr. Prysock? Not again, thank you for your report. At this time, I believe we need to call on uh, our budget audit committee, which is chaired by uh, Mr. McCumber. So I'll call on him. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the audit and budget committee met this morning um, quite early, and uh, everyone, uh, all the uh, governors were there, and I, I very much appreciate that. The primary purpose of the meeting was to discuss the budget and items surrounding the budget. So if the chair would like, uh, perhaps it would be a good time for uh, Rob to bring us up to date on the budget before I read the proposals that we passed out of the committee, if that's all right. That chair. would be fine. Thank you. We will uh, be adopting a, a new business, I assume the new business, the uh, FY 2017 budget, which will be adopted with a $78.6 million operating expense and proposed increase in our cash position of about $112,000. Included in there, there's gonna be compensation adjustments that we will consider as a proposal. And uh, there's also a inflationary factor for our uh, tuition and our enrollment, which we're very conservative. We're very pleased that this is the first time in four years that we will be adopting a positive budget, and we're very pleased to bring that forward to you. Very good. That being said, Mr. Chairman, uh, the committee did uh, pass four resolutions to which I present uh, as a motion, and those four are as follows. Number one, per agreement with the governor, in exchange for approximately a 4% increase in state appropriations, the Board of Governors reaffirms no increase for in-state and line pride tuition, which keeps the rate at $177.03 for FY 2017. Item number two, authorize the administration to increase compensation with a 2.25% across the board salary increase 
for eligible employees with a minimum increase of $600 full-time and $300 part-time. Number three, to authorize the administration to adopt an operating expense budget of $78.6 million for FY 2017. And lastly, number four, to authorize the administration to increase our current line of credit from $2 million to $5 million. Okay, and you're proposing that as a motion? Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? Second. Uh, Mr. Gibson, uh, we've had a motion and a second uh, to take up all these proposals. Is there any further discussion? If not, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. The motion is approved. Um, the Personnel Compensation Committee did meet, but because the subject is uh, personal, that was closed and that report was made to the uh, in the closed session of the board, so we won't go into the specifics. Uh, I believe at this point, uh, we need to call on Dr. Marble for his report. Thank you, John, for my I'm trying to be brief. Um, first, I would like to start by uh, thanking Dr. Charlotte and, uh, and Kyle for their service. Uh, it's been really great working with the faculty and the staff and the students and just the fabulous people. I appreciate your, your help very, very much. Um, as usual, we start off with the budget and legislative uh, report. We're very pleased about that, but uh, you, we did have a 4% increase. It actually converts into a 3.66% increase for us. And I've included a spreadsheet on the back that will show you uh, why, because there's some equity adjustments that uh, there's a formula in place uh, that I guess has been around four or five years that tries to make up for past uh, funding inequities between universities. And we, in the four-year sector, have to take money from each other to do that. Um, the community colleges got extra money to spread around to do their equity, so uh, it was an interesting, um, interesting little discussion we've had about how to maybe fix that in the future. Uh, the, the far right column is one that you really should pay attention to because the, it is the uh, column that has, includes the withholding, 3% government withholding, which happens Every year, and I think, Rob, correct me, it's been 20 years at least that we've had that 3% withholding in Missouri. Uh, so the dollars that we really get won't represent what you see that was appropriate. We're going to get less than that. But still, it was a very, very good year for us. We're delighted to have the, the um, increases. We also received a, a new decision item of uh, $2 million to help us uh, facilitate the changes that we have to do to get the dental school on campus to uh, move the Child Development Center, move psychology, do some building there. Uh, House Bill uh, 18 includes uh, 9.3 million more dollars for Reynolds Hall, so really in a couple of years we have uh, acquired $17 million to work on Reynolds and expand it, and it really needs it. And we do need to remember to thank uh, Senator Richard and our uh, local delegation and the governor uh, for helping to support this need that uh, very, very generous to us. Uh, tuition, I mentioned there that we have, we'll need to keep it uh, flat this year, but also we need to remember that we are on the very, very low end of tuition. Um, we are $20 per credit hour below Missouri Western, which is our sister institution, and in the future <coughs> we're going to have to think about some sort of tuition increase if we need to continue to um, support our students in the way that they deserve, I believe. Um, the budget that we presented this time was balanced for the first time in several years, so that was um, pleasant, a very pleasant surprise. Not surprise, very pleasant um, <laughs> surprise maybe for you, but um, a very pleasant <laughs> opportunity. And I think it does have to do with people taking um, ownership of, the, of their own areas. And you heard an example of that just a few minutes ago. Um, Darren mentioned that. Uh, Dr. Plasensky and Dr. Johnson you know, talked about a way that you know, they, they re refocused some money they had in their own department. A lot of that's been going on around campus. As we get further into the great game of education, I think we'll see more and more of that. I also pointed out that Alex Burns taken over um, the CQI process. Recall the program for organization we went through a few years ago. Um, we went through, worked through a lot of those uh, issues. We still have several that are out there to be fixed, and I think that going through that process every year will help us feed into the great game things that we need to be working on give us new metrics to measure 
Uh, the last thing I have in the report you can uh, read there is about the CBHG mission review. Uh, you'll recall that the, um, there was a, a legislative effort uh, last spring to relax some of the rules on uh, what programs certain universities could offer. Uh, the uh, legislation was stalled. The Speaker of the House then uh, directed the coordinating board to um, come up with some sort of recommendation by the end of the year. So the, um, the coordinating board, along with the Department of Higher Education, we were away at Brian Pope and we were kind of meeting this. Um, and it's kind of morphed into a mission review and who can do program offerings and what statutory restrictions might be in place. And I'm not really sure where it's going to go, but um, we'll be involved in that, very engaged, uh, to make sure that, that some of those questions are answered. And, and our, the statute that affects us in particular lists <coughs> particularly accountancy as a master's degree we can offer. It also goes on to say that any other uh, graduate program would be preferred. Um, so it always comes up as a question at the department, well it says accountancy, but yes it also says others too. So anytime we have a master's degree that we want to propose, they stick on the accountancy part. So that may need to be cleaned up, that does need to be cleaned up in my view. Um, but this whole discussion of uh, you know, we're not the ones most restricted, frankly. There are other universities in the state that are more restricted than us. So I think this will be a very interesting fall, um, and we should know something by next legislative session about what the uh, coordinating board and the Department of Higher Education uh, intend to propose. So that's all I know about that at this point. Are there any questions of Dr. Marble? Thank you, Dr. Marble's report. It really gives uh, documents some of the excuses that are often given for why a particular program is not considered at, at, a, at an additional institution. And this is a real problem. Uh, to think that place-based education is not important is crazy. Not everybody uses the internet to learn everything at this point. And uh, what you're really saying is that a particular part of the state of Missouri is going to have a very low ceiling this point. If the market's there, if it can be supported, if it can be justified, it should be considered. It's that simple. But those who have a program already will say that's needless duplication. That's not true because frankly there are a whole lot of people living in southwest corner of Missouri who aren't going to drive to the northern part of Missouri to go to school. They just won't go into those professions at this point. The, uh, the advent of a medical school in Joplin is going to prove this beyond words at this point. But to have statutory restrictions based on people who are trying to create barriers to competition, or I would argue barriers to opportunity, is, is nonsense. Uh, it really defeats all purpose of having a coordinating board, which is supposed to adjudicate these matters when you stop everything by statute. So it's, this is an issue that's been discussed for a while. But I believe it's finally going to come to a head because there are people who are going to force it to come to a head, and it's a discussion that's long overdue. So I want to thank Dr. Marble for, for keeping this in front of the governors at this point and for his representation with the, the board on our behalf. Well, well, I, you. I would point out, too, that uh, Mr. Fogel, the chair of the coordinating board, was on campus for that disaster workshop that I mentioned earlier. And while he was here, it was very complimentary of Dr. Marble and the, the things that are going on at Missouri Southern at this time. Thank you. Are there any further comments or questions concerning Dr. Marble's report? If not, well, thank you. And is there any other item of old business to come before the board? If not, we will go into new business and uh, we have a uh, proposed uh, policy on policies and I believe Dr. Marble is the one that's going to speak on that. Yes, I, I know you, you received a copy of this earlier. I don't know. A while back I asked a comment. Uh, Hush Blackwell, you know, they're, they're putting together a policy library for us so that we won't, the idea is that we have a policy library so that in the faculty handbook if they make a statement about human resources policy, the student handbook can make some statement about work policies. It just has a link back to human resources so that we all have a common area and we won't have separate things because in the past those have been mistyped, mistaken, misinterpreted. I don't know a lot of things.
But the very beginning of the policy library is for the board to have a policy on what, what policies the board views as organizational, basically, umbrella policies. And then what will be administrative under that. And then we'll work at the departmental and academic and all that stuff under, under that. But the very first step was what she sent out. Um, I know some of you looked through it and I talked to uh, Governor Flanagan. She went through it very carefully. Um, and we had probably been through six or seven versions before we sent it out to you. So uh, you can either comment on it, act on it, ask questions about it, and act on it in a future meeting. Or if it's good, we can move to do it now and get rolling. So, Governor Fletcher, I, I have one question. Yes. And that is the top of the last page. It's this bracketed uh, section that says optional. I can see it for you. Oh, yeah. So that means that some policies would be viewable by the general public, okay. and some would not be okay. at our determination. Okay. Thank you. Because we want to make as many policies completely open to people as we can, but there may be some that we might not want to, to put out there. All right, uh, the chair would entertain a motion if anybody is inclined to make one regarding this uh, proposed policy on policies. I'm going to accept this policy on policy. Okay, we have a motion by Ms. Flanagan. <coughs> Mrs. Flanagan, do I hear a second? A second. I have a second by Mr. McCumber. Uh, further discussion? There's no discussion. All those in favor of the motion to approve the proposed policy signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay. The policy is approved. Um, okay. Um, I think we've already approved the uh, 2017 budget. That's on the agenda, but we can cross that off. Consideration of academic policy proposals by Dr. Carson. So apologies for the voluminous file that we sent to you with regard to academic policies um, this particular time. We, we had a significant combination, as you'll see, in the report just prior to the green tab um, that were regular, just normal curricular changes and enhancements. But I think we begin to see this particular uh, meeting the emergence of substantive academic policies, those types of issues being deliberated by academic policies was restructured in order to consider. Um, there are, you know, I, I just sort of marvel at two lines on this paper, it takes hundreds and hundreds of hours of discussion, and I, I am not really particularly conscious of which ones you all might find interesting or want more detail on or not. So. I am going to talk very, very quickly about a couple of them, and then I'm going to ask if we could perhaps consider scheduling our first academic affairs subcommittee at the September meeting. The August meeting right now is scheduled is right around new faculty orientation and um, beginning of the semester. So um, I would I would like to go over some of these in, in detail. Some um, are in progress, and I would like to talk about a significant number of future anticipated academic policies that I think will not be controversial, and I think will be very consistent with our peer institutions and will be very beneficial to us on, on many fronts. But here you begin to see, for example, we have academic policy on the change of syllabus format, just the whole way that we present relevant information to our student body about the classes that are taken and the expectations we are living. Um, has been has been changed. It's a really a completely different orientation in that we are empowering faculty members to have more latitude and autonomy in how they deliver their content so long as they all um, can demonstrate evidence that students have mastered the shared learning objectives. There is, um, we have a, a policy now, and again, just part of the natural evolution of a growing institution, but a policy now on the extent to which faculty members um, can advise, can enroll, can instruct very, very close family members 
um, some cases that that may have to happen because of the limited number of experts that we have in specific areas. Um, but more and more, we're actually having options and flexibility so that we are at the size and stature where we can begin to promulgate policies such as that. Um, and then this year, this upcoming year will be uh, one and um, Brad and I were talking about it earlier, of a spe specific discussion about gen ed and our core and what liberal education means and how should our liberal education state mandated core requirements fit into our degree programs in a way that um, that allows a student to begin with foundational fundamental learning and progress to be able to think in higher order manners in a more integrative way. So you'll, you saw in your packet the beginning of that. The last thing I want to talk about with regard to academic policies is that um, I feel like it has been a very great year working with faculty senate and academic policies on handbook changes. At first, at first, um, you know, and as I finish my first year here, I'm, um, and everyone reads the handbook for the first time, like, well, that's not exactly what we meant. I can see how, but there was shared understanding. A lot of it was just really editorial in nature and small small points and tweaks to, to make clarifications of what everyone understands the handbook committee and, and you all as governors intended. So there was an enormous number of changes, um, but those changes were either improvements or they were just alterations as the evolution of trying things such as SCOC and academic policies and saying, you know what, here is a better way. And so I think the handbook emerges at the end of this year stronger because of the collaborative efforts that we have undertaken um, than it was even when you all passed it. So when you all look at the number of those handbook changes, they have been thoroughly vetted, considered they're not frivolous, they have not been controversial, um, I, I don't think, and they're just efforts really to continue to strengthen an already strong and very important document for um, our shared governance. Okay, I believe that uh have submitted a number of specific uh, proposals that have been submitted to the board for review. I guess we need to have a motion to approve those. I would appreciate that very much. Do we hear a motion? So move, uh, move we uh, approve the academic uh, policies proposed. Okay, we have a motion by Mrs. Hersaway. Do I hear a second? I'll second. And a second by Mrs. Plotnick. Any further discussion? <coughs> All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank Any you. opposed nay? The motion is approved. Um, at this point, uh, I believe it's time to take up the uh, appointment of a chairman of the board for the coming, uh, coming year. And so, I guess the appropriate thing is to ask for nominations for an incoming chairman. Mr. Flashick, I'd like to nominate Governor McCumber. Okay, we have a nomination of Mr. McCumber. Uh, I think that requires a second. I'll second that. Okay, we do have a second by Ms. Ms. Hersway. Are there any other nominations? If there's no other nominations, the uh, chair would entertain a motion to elect by acclamation. Moved. Motion by Mr. Franks. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Uh, Hankins. Any further discussion? All those in favor of uh, electing Mr. McCumber by acclamation signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed nay? Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We also need to elect a vice chairman. Do I hear any nominations? For vice chair? Yes. I nominate Governor Hankins. We have a nomination of Governor Hankins as vice chair. Do I hear any second? Second. I have a second by Mr. Gibson. Do I hear any other nominations? If not, the chair would entertain a motion to elect Mr. Hankins vice chair by acclamation. So moved. A motion by Mr. Franks. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. McCumber. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, <laughs> nay? Congratulations, Mr. Hankins. For treasurer, uh, do I hear a nomination for treasurer? I believe uh, 
Zeiss has been our treasurer for several years. Make a motion she continue in that position, which I see a sigh of relief coming from that side of the table. I'll we second have, that. We have a uh, nomination by uh, Mr. Cumber and a second by Ms. Plotnick. Uh, any other nominations? If not, all those in favor of electing Zeiss <coughs> by acclamation signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay. <coughs> okay, congratulations. Thank what you. a surprise. <laughs> and finally, we have a, need to have a nomination for secretary. I move that Sharon Odom continue as our secretary. Okay, we have a nomination. Do I hear a second? Second. Have a second. Uh, I'll say Mr. Franks. Aye there. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay? Congratulations, Ms. Odom, Mr. Secretary. <laughs> At this point, uh, is there any other new business to come before the board? If not, the chair would entertain a motion to adjourn. So, and the motion by Mr. McCumber. Do I hear a second? Second by Mr. Hanks. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay. We are adjourned. Congratulations. We made it. We made it. Thank you.